Do you know how connected global trade is with San Valentine's Day? And do you know about its fascinating history, which even has a link to V-Day, Victory Day in Europe over Nazi Germany? Hey, let me tell you more about St. Valentine's Day, global trade, its fascinating history right now in this video. Hey, so thank you very much for joining us again for another episode. It's so great to welcome you to our channel. Hey, before you continue watching this, please subscribe to the channel, like it, and of course, share it with anybody who's interested in some in spreading some love and uh, just having a bit of fun with this important day, St. Valentine's Day. So this is why we've got to do something different than normally talking about customs and global trade. We got to mix it up a little. And so here, a couple of weeks ago, we asked you uh, to give us some, some questions, right? What would you like us to research? What would you like to ask us about the connection between St. Valentine's Day today on the 14th of February, global trade and customs? And we received quite a few questions, uh, quite a few quirky ones as well. And we've actually selected the top seven. Right, so let's go right into it. So the first question I've got here for you from Anna. So thank you very much, Anna, for asking this question. Obviously, number one, who was St. Valentine's? And yep, where is he from? What does he do? Who's this guy? St. Valentine's Day, named the name. St. Valentine's Day was named after the saint patron St. Valentine. There were at least two men that called Valentine and they could have introduced this holiday. So one was a uh, Valentine, a priest in, uh, in Rome. Valentine defied Emperor Claudius II. Um, he had a ban on marriage and he continued uh, marrying them, then defying the emperor's wishes. Unfortunately, he was sentenced to death after he was caught. You do not continue marrying for the sake of love. You've got to respect the, the rules. Another legend suggests that Valentine was actually a prisoner who helped Christians uh, flee Rome. And he was imprisoned and wrote the first Valentine letter and he signed it out of prison and he signed it from your Valentine. Isn't that neat? So the second question comes from Josh. Thank you very much. Why February 14th? Well, good question, isn't it? Um, so I made a bit of research and uh, it was actually in the fifth century that Roman Pope Galazius officially declared this day, the 14th of February as St. Valentine's Day. But then it wasn't associated with love. So that happened in the Middle Ages when uh, the uh, today's uh, festival became associated with love and romance because it was set to be the start of the mating seasons for the birds. Would you have believed? Question three, where and when did we start writing all these cards and making all these presents for St. Valentine's Day? Well, it was not until the 1840s now that we started mass producing Valentine's Day cards and presents. People started exchanging cards and handwriting letters for lovers and friends during the 17th century. But it was not until the 1840s that the St. Valentine's Day cards were mass produced in the US. And that was an Esther A. Howland, would you believe? She became actually known as the mother of American Valentine. And she's accredited also with commercializing Valentine's Day cards in America, which then spread across the world. And they are still remembered today for them being very elaborate, very crafty, and with laces and ribbons, so very cute for Valentine's Day. So if you send a Valentine's Day card today, you know, dates back from the lady. Question number four side or challenge actually side one uh, St. Valentine's Day tradition associated with Europe. Well, I had to look for that um, because obviously, um, you know, if the Valentine's cards are already gone with America, what's left? Well, I thought, what about the roses? Because you know that red roses may be an obviously romantic gesture, but in terms of Valentine's Day, it wasn't until the 17th century that giving flowers actually became a customs. And this can be traced back to uh, King Charles II of Sweden. He learned the language of flowers and that you paired flowers um, with different colors and different meanings. And he learned that on a trip to Persia and brought it back into Europe. And so they, they the act of giving flowers then became very popular in the Victorian area, era in England. Um, and that introduced Valentine's Day with red roses symbolizing deep love. 
so the history books tell us. Is that all right? All right, so now a commercial question. Uh, thank you, Matthew. How much do we spend on St. Valentine's Day? Well, again, I've got only figures from America here, but I'm sure um, Europeans can tell me how much we spend and do a bit of research and then let me know in the comments down below. But overall, according to the American National Retail Association, there were, Americans spend over $20 billion every year on Valentine's Day cards, gifts and the likes of it. Um, and there's about $4.2 billion on candy alone. It's crazy, right? Um, there are about 145 million Valentine's Day cards spent every day and some sent abroad, of course. And they also spent millions of dollars on gifts for their pets, would you believe? Probably the same we do in Europe. And the second to last question is, of course, about chocolate. When did chocolate get associated with St. Valentine's Day? Well, you've got to go back to the year 1861. This is when Richard Cadbury, the son of the Cadbury founder, John Cadbury, started packing chocolates into small heart shapes um, boxes to increase the sales. And he then first introduced these heart shape, shape uh, boxes um, as a gift for V-Day. And that was in 1861. And today, more than 36 million heart shape boxes are sold every year. That's 58 million pounds of chocolate. And now to the final question. What do customs managers and customs geek love about customs this Valentine's Day? <laughs> what a question. What a question. Well, look, let me give you, there's so many things. Um, let me just give you two examples. Number one, the sheer complexity of it. I mean, you think you know everything or you know a lot, and then you read one word and everything's put into doubt again. You read a word such as all non-originating material. And you think, all? Or you think, is that now a non-originating material? So, and all of the things you've learned, you, you've got to think about this again and think about it in the context of, of the person you're trying to help or the company that you're trying to help. You think, what is originating material in this context? And you've got to apply the theory to the lot to the to the real life situation and this is what's so fascinating because you know the theory but in this new context of your client of 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 the company that you work for how do you translate this theory into our products that is fascinating beyond belief because in you know theory says this but then the reality says this and making the two match is wonderful is absolutely rewarding and it's just something i love the second thing I would say is the sheer masses of abbreviations and shortenings of words that we have in customs and global trade. Um, I mean, you can say the sentence like with your AEO authorization and your EORI number, you can lodge a customs declaration in chief or CDS. Um, and that allows you to use your CFSP in order to reduce your data set. Uh, but do not forget to, um, to do your IPAPs or traces prior to lodging the declaration because you need the reference number so that once you've got and finished your customs declaration, you can generate an uh, MRN and that MRN you need to be input into the GVMS system to generate your GMR. And that makes total sense. Isn't that amazing? I mean, don't you just love being able to talk like that? No, you must not be a customs manager then. You must be maybe someone who loves trade more than customs, is that so? Do you know what? Today, it's all about love. Today, it's all about appreciation. Maybe not customs, maybe not global trade, maybe the people in your life, the people that you value, the people that you love, the people that you share time with. So for a day, let's park customs and global trade and focus on what really matters. And that is and always remains love. I'm going to have a piece of chocolate now. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time for another customs and global trade topic. Have a happy and lovely St. Valentine's Day. Thank you.